Welcome back to How To Craft Fair. This is episode number 15 in the How To Become A Craft Fair Vendor series. And today's episode is everyone is a potential buyer at a craft fair. So being a vendor at a craft fair booth is going to quickly teach you to never judge a book by its cover. Sometimes the demographics of your buyers are gonna surprise you, okay? Um, today's video is going to be a little bit different than the other videos in this series because instead of giving you just like rapid fire tips, what I'm going to do today is to give you reminders, okay, of good habits that you should already have in place. But if you don't, then I'm glad you're watching. But today is about habits, and these habits are mostly mental habits, okay? So normally we talk about doing physical things like a setup or a display or your signage. This is kind of more so looking inward and giving you the best, giving yourself the best opportunity to succeed by mentally preparing for who your buyers could be at a craft fair. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, now one thing that affects all vendors is that the time of year may affect your customer base. Certain holidays are gonna provide opportunities to capitalize on demographics who might be searching for that special gift. Think about Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, Father's Day, and even Veterans Day. Plan ahead for this. And remember that these special dates can bring out shoppers and buyers that you might not typically see at your booth. So you want to be able to plan ahead, plan to have some inventory on hand for these special dates, and at least dedicate a small portion of your booth for these calendar events that kind of pop up and bring out shoppers that you might not normally expect. Okay, now something that you should never be doing at your booth is making assumptions about demographics. All right, so just imagine in your mind a woman's jewelry booth. Okay, so earrings, necklaces, all kinds of stuff, rings. Now, if you have a booth set up like this, you don't want to ignore any kind of male visitors at the craft fair. And then on the flip side, if you have kind of like a, you know, quote unquote, like a manlier booth, right? Where maybe it's like woodwork or something like that, something kind of gritty. Um, you never want to ignore the the women who, who come into your booth, okay? Now, um, if you have recognized that, okay, you know, my booth is generally attracting a certain demographic, you never want to dismiss people outside of that demographic, okay? You need to take them just as seriously as any other shopper that walks into your booth, all right? So you basically just have to approach everybody with the same manner and you have to give them the same amount of respect and consideration and it's gonna pay off in the long run, okay? So people are always buying for other people. I mean, especially at craft fairs, you know, it's, it's, it's a great place to shop for, for gifts for other people. And, um, people are encouraged to do that these days, you know, shop local, shop small, support small business, things like that. So, um, people are doing this, you know, so you never know if some, somebody is shopping for themselves or if they're shopping for somebody else. So basically you just want to give everybody the same playing field, the same amount of attention and respect, um, because you never know where that next purchase is going to come from. Okay, but on the flip side, you also want to keep trying to keep track of demographics that are purchasing from your booth, okay? Um, even if it takes logging generalized info on your sales sheet, just say, for example, okay, a man in his 40s or a woman in her 20s, this could prove to be beneficial to you in the long run, as far as targeted social media ads or other forms of marketing in the future, it's always a good idea to have an idea of who resonates the most with your booth because you can turn around and use that information. Uh, just like I said, for example, if you set up like a Facebook ad, um, those are targeted ads. So it's going to give you the chance to 
hone in on certain individuals where you can send that ad out to those people who are more likely to respond positively to those ads. Okay, and then in the short term, if you know the demographic of your buyers, then that's gonna help you with planning for inventory and restock, and it's gonna give you a better idea of what you should be working on between your shows and in your off season. So this is also another big benefit of having a good idea of your target demographic. All right, now this next tip, it could be, uh, some people might agree, some people might disagree, but let's chat about it in the comments, and it's a subject that I think we should be talking about, okay? And that is to take kids seriously. Now, we all know that there's like two different types of craft fair kids, right? There's the kids who are like composed and can handle themselves at a craft fair and responsible. And then there's like the crazy kids who are all amped up and Tasmanian devils and treat your booth like a playground. Now, let's just set the types of kids aside, okay? And let's just talk about like the opportunity that kids bring. And there's like a short-term opportunity and then there's a long-term opportunity. And in the short term, you should treat kids as you would an adult shopper because a lot of times, honestly, kids are shoppers. Sometimes the parents will just like flip them 20 bucks and be like, hey, go run around for an hour and I'll see you after an hour or something like that. Well, like kids are buyers too. So don't dismiss them because you think that they're not there to buy something because a lot of times they are also now in the long term, this is kind of like the bigger picture idea and like the bigger broader point that I want to make with this is that don't dismiss kids just because they are younger. Use it as an opportunity to get them excited about craft fairs and to leave a good impression on the next generation of crafters and craft enthusiasts. Like, have you ever gone back to an old neighborhood or like an old house that you grew up in as a kid or maybe a store or something? And when you go back as an adult, I don't know about you guys, but like I've done this and everything feels small. Like the house like feels small, the rooms feel small, the yard, the neighborhood, like everything seems like smaller and almost like insignificant compared to how I thought about it as a kid. Like this big neighborhood and all this stuff. And it's just so much more expansive when you're a kid. And think about that. Think about what a craft fair must be like for a kid, like how exciting it must be to be at an event like that where there's, you know, dozens or maybe even hundreds of booths with all sorts of different creations. And, you know, it's, you basically have a chance to make a big impression on the kids, you know, that, that come by. And I know I a hundred percent understand and know that at some times it can be frustrating to have, you know, the, you know, kind of the crazier kids like around the booth and stuff like that, especially when the parents aren't around or they're around and they just don't care. Like, I understand that those moments can be frustrating, but um, I wanted to talk about, you know, kids at craft fairs in this video because they are a big part of craft fairs. And, you know, there's always younger people getting into craft fairs, like, you know, having their own booths and stuff like that. So, just keep that going, you know, just do your part to keep that going and to keep that excitement going. And, you know, maybe even you yourself were a kid at one point who was at craft fairs. And can you honestly say that every single time you were 100% perfectly behaved, you know, I mean, so just give them the same chance that you'd give to an adult. Okay, now for this next tip, I know that some of us already do this, but you should be doing your part as a vendor. So when you participate in an event, your hope that is that as many people as possible come out to support makers and their small businesses, right? You know, like we always make those social media posts on our page before an event comes up and we say shop small and support small business and shop local. Well, do you do the same thing? Do you support your fellow crafters by doing your shopping at an event? Um, it's it's something to consider, you know, and I actually I, I challenge you to do all of your gift giving shopping at the craft fairs that you participate in. So like if you shop for people on Christmas or like maybe for their birthdays, 
you know, why not get it from the craft fair, you know, buy from another vendor and, you know, it'd be, it'd be great if all vendors were doing this and basically just, you know, shopping from each other and supporting each other. And I know that a lot of vendors do this and some vendors don't want to do this because they kind of look at it as there's kind of like a mindset of, okay, but I don't want to give all my profits for the day to other booths, but you really can't think about it that way because if you go to a craft fair and you don't, you know, buy from other booths, what are you going to do when Christmas comes around and people's birthdays comes around? Like you're just going to go shop from stores anyways, or you're going to go on, you know, Amazon or whatever site you're going to order from. You're just going to buy from some stores, you know? So it's like that money is kind of gone and dedicated to those presents and things like that anyway. So why not do it at the craft fairs? So again, this is just something that, you know, vendors should be doing to really stand by that message. If, if they're going to tell their supporters to shop small and shop local and support small business, then they should be doing it too. You know, they got to live by and stand behind that statement as well. So one thing that you can do to kind of prepare for this is a lot of times the organizer will send out some kind of an email or maybe they'll make a social media post of all the vendors who are going to be part of the event. Do your research ahead of time, you know, scope out some of the booths and see if there's things that, you know, would be a great fit for a gift for somebody. And then that way you're kind of doing it prepared or maybe you can even connect with the other vendor ahead of time so that when you get to the event, you've pretty much already have like something set in stone, like some kind of purchase set aside. So that way it's, it can be done very, very quickly because before the show, there's like so many things to do with setup and getting your booth ready. And it's nice to kind of have this arranged ahead of time so that you can kind of just meet up and make it happen and then, you know, get back to what you need to do. But yeah, you want to keep your other vendors in mind and you yourself should be ready for those opportunities too, because a lot of times, um, like I said, vendors are buying from one another before the show. So that means that you want to have your booth set up early enough where you have an opportunity to catch some sales from other vendors as well. So you want to get in kind of on that action as well. So yeah, it's, it's just like a big like circle and cycle, you know what I mean? Where, you know, maybe you'll get some sales from other vendors, but then don't be afraid to arrange some sales for yourself, you know, and um, purchases for yourself so that you know, you can feel good about telling people to shop small and sh shop local because you are doing the same. All right. Now this next tip is a little bit different and something that we definitely have not talked about on the channel yet. So I want you to be willing to adapt and evolve as a craft fair vendor, specifically when it comes to your mindset about your target demographic. Now imagine being a craft fair vendor for five years. Imagine being a craft fair vendor for 10 years or 15 years. Your booth layout, your displays, your item, you yourself, pretty much everything about how you're presenting your booth is going to look quite different at the end of year 10 as it did at the end of day one, okay? So even though in the very beginning when you're first getting started, you know, you, you probably have your target demographic figured out, okay? You, you pretty much know who your booth is going to appeal the most. Now... As time goes on and your booth changes and your items change and you bring different elements into your booth, you also have to be prepared for that demographic that you appeal to on day one to also change, okay? Because you look different and your setup looks different. So just be willing to adapt and be willing to kind of face the fact that you might start attracting a different audience than you did in the beginning, okay? Okay. It's basically just a sense of awareness when it comes to your booth. That's why you should always be keeping track of your demographics to identify any kind of changes or trends that might be happening. And that actually might be going hand in hand and aligning with changes that you're making in your booth. Okay. So just be strategic about it. Be aware of it and be willing to adapt along with it. Okay, so this next part, I don't know if it's a tip or more of just like going to be a monologue for a couple of minutes, but it's something that I haven't really talked about really at all on the channel so far. And recently I made a TikTok post about how craft fair vendors feel about organizers who mix 
craft fair vendors and direct sale or MLM vendors at craft fairs. And, you know, I expected the comments to be like pushing back against that, of course, you know. Um, but what I didn't expect to see was like tons and time. I think like literally hundreds of comments from people saying that they've given up on craft fairs because there's MLMs and direct sales at craft fairs. And this was really like heartbreaking because it, it, I, I a hundred percent agree that it is frustrating to sign up for a craft fair and the organizer said, says it's going to be a craft fair. There's crafts. And then all of, all of a sudden you show up and half the show is direct sales and uh, MLMs. I, I get it. I get it. That sucks. You know what I mean? That's, that's terrible. I think what we got to do is basically just work on only signing up for shows that are transparent about the situation. Like if you're cool with being a craft or vendor at a show that's mixed with direct sales and that's okay with you, then cool. You know that there's nothing wrong with that if that is how you feel. But what can't happen is organizers basically deceiving vendors and them saying, you know, it's going to be a craft fair. And then all of a sudden you show up and there's like only 25% crafters and handmade stuff. Okay. So it's really like affecting the industry and it's affecting how many people are, are, you, are even going to craft fairs and, and being shoppers at craft fairs because they don't want to go to a craft fair and then they show up and it's all, you know, home improvement booths and direct sale vendors. Okay. So, uh, do your part as a vendor and, you know, hold organizers accountable and get them to clarify, you know, if they haven't clarified what the balance of the show is going to be, whether it's going to be like 90% handmade or hundred percent or, um, 50, 50 or whatever the situation is. And basically I think if we start doing that, it's going to kind of, give them hints that, you know, vendors are like tired of the deception and and the deceit when it comes to that. And hopefully that can trickle down to the shopper level as well. Um, that, you know, if shoppers see something that's advertised as a craft fair, it's going to be a craft fair. It's going to be crafts. Okay. So I know this was a little bit like coming out of left field in this video, but it, when you think about it, like it does trickle into, um, how many shoppers are coming out to craft fairs. And it, it truly blew my mind how many people said that they're like literally just not going to craft fairs anymore because it's half direct sales, you know? Um, so yeah, like I said, do your part. You know, there's, I know that you guys aren't organizers if you're a vendor, but you know, you can, you can have an effect on it if you, you know, voice your, voice your concern enough and just, you know, voice those clarifications that, you know, is it a craft fair and all that stuff. Um, and then any shoppers that are watching this, I hope that you still give crafters a chance. Okay. Because even if the organizer doesn't do the right thing and they don't advertise the event properly for what it is, there's still some crafters at these events. And I hope that you give them a chance, you know, because it's not, their fault how the organizer chose to phrase what the event is and what the event consists of okay so you know shoppers if you're watching this you know just have faith in craft fairs um still come on out shop small shop local you know support support those small businesses and uh, like I said, just have faith in those shows. So that's all I want to say for this video. I know this was a little bit different, okay? But I hope that you still got something good out of this. And really, like I said, most of this video is kind of about mindset. It's it's about mindset, your intentions, um, just giving people a chance and, and all that stuff. So um, yeah, this was episode number 15 in the How to Become a Craft Fair Vendor series. If you want to check out all the other videos in the playlist, click on this playlist above. And as always, thank you all so much for watching.